Hello everyone, Clay Jones with Fox Hills Disc Golf here. Michelle Jones at my side. Always will be. We are in Jacksonville, Florida for the 16th J.O. Very cool. We'd like to thank everybody for all their hard work out here. The place looks great. We especially got to give a big shout out to those guys at Bullet Disc Golf. Yeah, Glenn and Daniel Alexander, excellent TDs. These guys are doing a great job taking over for Joey and just ran a great tournament. We'd also like to thank our buddy Dr. Charlie and everybody over at Boris MD. Boris MD is the title sponsor for this event. Peter and Charlie provide education about how cannabis works in the body. Doc Charlie is a big old science nerd. It's okay, he knows. These are super smart guys. They've done the research and they can answer all your questions about medical cannabis. Also, we'd like to thank the Disc Golf Center for their continued support. Please go online and get you some Disc Golf stuff at Disc Golf Center. Get yourself a copy of Gracie and the Marvelous Metal Basket there at Disc Golf Center. Hi, Gracie. She's waving. She's so cute. <laughs> So after round two, Matt Brown had a stellar round and he is 17 down. Sullivan Tipton is 15 down, tied with Jamie Keep, and Aaron Doyle is right behind them at 13. All right, here we go with the flyover on hole one. I'd like to give Tate a big shout out. Great guy. Hole one is a par three at 356 feet. You got a little deal to get out and start off with and it's relatively wide open and perched up on that little mound right there. And you can see that little gauntlet you gotta throw out right off the bat. It's just a few trees, but it can be a little tricky for sure. They're right on the edge of where you wanna be, where you wanna throw. And Matt Brown taking the tee pad first from Jacksonville, Florida, right here. He crushes one right down the center. Oh yeah, that's a good way to get started. Uh oh. It starts out with that foxtail. <laughs> I mean, that thing is just pure. Boink. <laughs> it's about cool. perfect, man. Sullivan tipped in up next from Indian Springs, Alabama. Oh, got a little early release tickle, wow. and then he popped a pine there. Well, darn it. Jamie Keep is up next on the tee bed. He is from Leesburg, Georgia. Plays a lot in the Albany and the Chihaw Park and does a lot of work out there. And I tell you, if you've never been played at Chihaw Park, it's an amazing disc golf course. So nice. Yes, it is. That whole facility is super nice. Jamie throws a ton of overstable stuff. You can see that one's stabling up, get a good little skip. Just kind of leave him just a little inside the circle. But that mound, it's a definitely pucker factor. <laughs> For sure. Aaron Doyle, he is quite a fantastic player. I'm right here in Jacksonville, Florida. You can never count him out when he's on a lead card. Yeah, this is definitely his home turf. He's got one flipping up pretty nice. Got a couple of air bounces. Came in a little low. It's going to have a little longer than he'd like, but uh, we'll have a good look. Yeah, you can see Sullivan. He wound up wide open over there, and no problem. A up and down. Yeah, it looks like Aaron might be right on the edge here. Ooh. Yeah, there was a little wind, a little gusty today. You can see the trees moving around, so flag moving around. So. Having that thing up on the hill... It's really hard to put uphill in the wind, so. Fact. Jamie has got a very different putt than most folks. He has like a laser beam hyzer putt that's uh, <laughs> kind of uh, interesting. Cans a ton of them. Oh, just a scope short, that elevation. Just a little bit, yeah. That raised basket's tough, man. Aaron pulls out the par. 
And Jamie will cruise up there in his sweet awareness for autism outfit. Awesome sauce. And Sullivan will finish off his par there with that up and down after his brush with early disaster. And the tap in birdie for Mr. Brown. He's going to stretch his lead out just a little bit more. Good stuff. That's how you, go. Yeah, that's how you want to start when you're in the lead. Just keep going. Hey, look at these beautiful shirts, you guys. You want one of those. Oh, I know. I need to get somebody to make a couple for me, maybe. <laughs> I know a girl. Yeah, I, I do too. People. <laughs> Check out our Etsy shop, Etsy site though, guys. We really appreciate it. We're just trying to make a few little trinkets and items to get a little support, give you guys a little way to help out with this coverage. Here we go on hole two. It is a par three at 425. It's a little downhill undulation city, as you can see there, and lots of trees and bushy things around the trees. To <laughs> This one's tough. It's really uh, a lot tougher than it looks, I feel like, too, you know? I would agree with that. It's challenging for sure. And 425, it's got a little bit of distance to it. Matt's got one turned over and coming through the backside. My goodness, that was a fantastic shot. Heck yeah, scrubbed off a little bit of stuff there and wound up probably about a little less than 20, I think. one came out just a little bit low got a big Dukes of Hazard skip there and wound up at the bottom of that little knoll he's got the batching socks for this shirt as well oh yeah Jamie's a fashion icon he's styling oh he's always styling <laughs> and he goes with that big meat hook skipper there and you can see it's skipped out in the open. He'll have a look, but he's going to be right around 40, maybe a little outside of 40. <clears throat> and he's going to go backhand. He's got one flipped up, looking pretty good. Then he just caught some of the bushy stuff around the tree there. Well, darn it, bushy stuff. Yeah, bushy stuff will take you out, man. And you can see he wound up pretty open there. He got pretty fortunate, actually. He could have wound up behind some stuff. And he's out in the clear and in the shade. So you got to love that in Florida. <laughs> right. <laughs> great oh, upshot. that was nice. Yeah, he almost pinned the bottom of the pole there. That was a great shot. Ooh, we just skeeched around that tree a little bit there. That could have been a little yucky. Wound up okay, though. See a little tiny bit of headwind. It was shifting around a little bit. I think it was probably a 12, 15 mile an hour, something like that, most of the day. And some lulls and stuff, but pretty gusty. Oh, mm. man. Yeah, that had that dead center band sound to it. That was off by just a skosh. I mean. Oh, just a little left side, and that's not going to work. Got to make the short ones. Oh, that's going to put everybody in par territory on this one. Hole two is going to be the old party. Party. Party for two. Three's all around. They're not bad, but they're not that great either. No. <laughs> it's definitely a hole you like to get. Now this thing is crazy. This is hole three. It's a par three, 375. Man, it's a tough hole. We've got a little elevation lift and then it gets sort of flat on you. So you gotta throw it up a little bit to start off with and then you gotta get back into here somehow. It is It's wow. tough. Yeah. You can see that's a pretty skinny gap right off the bat there. And that crushed it right on through there. Lit it over on the right side, about hole high, but as you can see, still got a lot of stuff between him and the basket. Yeah. yeah, you can see for the first maybe 75, 85 feet of this hole, it's uphill. 
Yeah, I guess basically plateaus at the top and just goes straight down to the basket. That one looked like it was going to sneak, but it caught that little double tree deal and came down pretty good in the middle, though. Yeah, Jamie's religiously uses that birdie bag, bogey bag. I don't know which one it is. We'll have to find out. Jamie, give us a comment. He gripped it a little bit too much on that one. Caught a little tree, and he's gonna kick himself back over on the left side there. Not not in ideal position. Back in for Aaron. He's going a little more down that right hand side. Got a lot of fly time here. Man, that was pretty great. Incredible. Yeah, it was. Jamie, not so incredible. He's got some stuff in his backswing and stuff in his face. Cranks one out there with a little hyzer on it. And he's going to come up over it on that right side. About a hole high, but it's kind of, again, a lot of stuff between him and the basket. See, Sullivan came out down in pretty much ideal position right there. She's going to have a little pitch up to the basket. No stress on that one. I think yeah. I'd be okay with that hole. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you can see Matt's having to try to squirrel out there and get something. And man, he left himself a good little chunk still there. So that's not what he was looking for. Jamie going to a knee. Basket's really hard to see from here, but yeah, you can see how far he is away there. And all he had was a real nice up shot, so that'll work. Yeah, and as you can hear in the background, this is a very active park and with an airport next to it and playground and 70 million people walking around. So tons of distractions out here. Matt looking to save par here. He's still looking at a solid maybe 34 feet. No oh, goodness. Just a little bit left side. James got to take that bogey as well. Yeah, I feel like par is a pretty good score on this hole. Yeah, it is a very hard hole. Very tough hole. The funnel at the end just really caps it off, I feel like. It absolutely is like a funnel down there. Man. There's only one little, well, I guess two little paths to get in. They're both narrow, so. Yeah, we get some red on the old scorecard there. Separator hole. Yeah, that one actually is a bring your backer together hole. But <laughs> bring your backer together, I like it. <laughs> All right, here we go with hole four. It is a par three. It looks like a ball golf green. And you just hook it down in here to the right. Navigate through these trees. Or you can choose to go around them on that left side. Looks like Sullivan's going to go around them, hopefully. Get that forehand. It's popped up a little bit higher than he probably would have liked. Highs it up a little early, but he's going to have a great look. He's probably going to be about 30 feet, maybe just a little outside of 30 feet. That ought to work. Yeah. And that one's turned over and looking beautiful in all that clean airspace. Oh, and sails past the old catch cam guy and past the basket. It's going to have about a 55 or something like that. I'll have to see if that branch was hanging low is going to be in his shot or not. And that. Yeah, he could have a little obstructed action mm -hmm. there. That going backhand, a little turnover action. Oh, he just got super unlucky and caught that last big tree on the way in and mm -hmm. kicked him out. It's going to be a little outside over there. A long putt. Jamie looks like he's eyeballing a roller here. Oh yeah, that lays down a beauty. 
Oh, wow. What a great shot. Yes, sir. Gotta love it. Matt will be first up on the green here. Oh, okay. The old pole. Object golf, that would have been great. <laughs> Here and it's just a little bit outside the circle here. Never quite got that one up. Yeah, it doesn't look like that branch though was hanging in his way. That was nah, higher he was, than I thought. Yeah, he was in the clear. A little elevation on this uh, green though for sure. He was putting a little uphill. Great putt. High dead center. Good job, Sully. And Jamie, after that beautiful roller, is maybe 12 feet max. Nicely done, sir. I'd like to thank Ian for coming helping us out on the camera there, buddy. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, sweet camera work, Joe Racer. Hey, Aaron's going to have to settle for a par. As will Matt. Right. Couple pars, couple of birds. Nicely played hole. And Mr. Sullivan will take over the tee pad. Alright, hole five is a par three, 400 feet. It's a tough hole also. It's got a little bump up on the start and then a, a gauntlet situation. Yep. And then a little downhill action. And a bunch of trees. Bunch of trees to the left and a few. Oh, look out. <laughs> Mr. Sullivan going with his backhand. Just got turned over nicely, looking dead center. Just hides it up a little early. Got a very nice kick, though. Yeah, rolled on perfectly into the center of the fairway. Right back in the middle. Jamie going to do some slicing and dicing here. Is that his, a roller disc? His discs act very differently than everyone else's, I'm telling you. Looks like he got a little understable action there, and he flipped her over a little bit. Just got a little runner and also a little fortunate to kick back out. So he's going to be in the clear. Probably pretty easy up and down. Here has got one pured right down the center and flipped over a little bit. He's going to come back to Heiser. Catch an edge. He's going to be just outside the circle with a beautiful look. What a great shot. That was pretty great. Looks like a little local route there. Hey, Matt released that one a little early, but he got a little on it and flipped it and also wound up right in the center. This nice. hole this hole's got some good karma going right now. Clean living. I bet these guys recycle. <laughs> yeah, these guys recycle for sure. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Matt with a beautiful little upshot. Oh, He's going to dink it right at the bottom of the pole there. Perfectly played. Jamie rocking that Team Infinite logo on there. Looking good. Yeah, also a House of Trees sponsored player. Yeah, very nice. Sullivan's got a little bit of a look here. He's got a little downhiller about, I don't know, 50, maybe 45. And man, he hit her dead center. Just a little low. Aaron Doyle for his bird. Yeah, he looks like he's about 35 here. Bang! Oh. Right over the edge, baby. That was a beauty. This guy's got some skills. Yeah, we'll get a little slow-mo action of that one, man. Bang! Right in the slot. Mm -hmm. Jamie, after that beautiful upshot, take his par. So a little step up there from a very similar distance, probably about 12 feet out. And Aaron's going to get one on the field. Mm -hmm. 
Tim Roth, like I said. Right. Don't watch that guy. He'll creep up on you. I don't watch that guy. <laughs> He's just three strokes back now. Hole A. Here what we go. 265 is part three. A little Mando action. It's undulation, and then she's perched up on the top of the hill there. With low ceiling if you're on that left side. So there's a lot of challenges in this hole. Absolutely. Low ceiling. That moss down there is hanging down. It's definitely challenging. Aaron's got one flipped up looking just about perfect, but then you see what happens. Mm -hmm. That old Batumbo tree just said, <laughs> not today. <laughs> That one's flipped up nice, gonna catch a perfect bounce on the hill, or skip, excuse me, and gonna put him just outside the circle. A little bit of a downhill after the basket on that line though, so I'll we'll have to be a little careful on that one. Maybe flipped one over, but wait, no, his just do different things. It's over there by the basket now. Okay. I know, it's like magic. He's He's got some directional discs, does he? <laughs> he's something. It's very hard to catch Cam because you just don't know. He's, it comes rocketing out of his hand and then just hyzers up at the end and does the craziest thing. So <laughs> Matt, on the other hand, just threw a beautifully pure one down there and put it right inside the circle. So great shot. You're looking for up and down here. Oh, oh. or I'll, excuse me, looking to make it. Sorry. Oh. What a great run. Another inch that was in. Beautiful putt, dead center, baby. Beautiful. I mean, I like to pet a dog as much as anybody, but it's slightly distracting. <laughs> Disc Golf Center is your number one choice for discs, accessories, and low prices. With free shipping within the U.S. on all orders over $12, discounts from our customer rewards program, and the ability to pick out the exact weight and color disc you want from our live inventory of over 20,000 options, you'll find exactly what you're looking for. Visit DiscGolfCenter.com, the world's largest disc golf store. All right, don't forget to get on over there to the Disc Golf Center and get some Frisbees. Yeah. Matt Sullivan and Jamie, I'll take birdies on that hole. Man, that was a great, well-played hole, gentlemen. All right, we will move on to hole B. It is a par four at 742 feet. It's kind of wide open, but then if you get into this right side, you can see it can get kind of woodsy. <laughs> like the woods out in the middle of the field. It's like really perfect for disc golf. It's really cool. What a great park. And there you can see you can ride that openness and then you got to take that hard right and get in there. Ooh. Oh yeah, Ian set up his camera in front of the tee pad. We got some great sounds so we decided to give a little side-by-side -side showcase action. Sold them down there very nicely. <laughs> you gotta love it. It never gets old. <laughs> it gets me every time. I love it so much. Yeah, that is the real sound of the disc. It's not a jet sound off the internet or anything. That's real. Matt got that one turned over nicely as well and came down ideally. And Aaron also got his flipped up and just about a perfect placement on your first drive, so good job guys. And you can see that's the probably the preferred line on the way in. If you could get through that little gap right there, I think uh, Matt's going to go around the outside though. 
Comes in with that high any flip over faded in there. And landed over there. <laughs> the wind was so gusty too, it just added so much variable. And going with a low start back in, got a little bit of height on him, but fought through and he's in a good position. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna be about the circle's edge. Yep. Jamie with that super meat hook action coming in hot. Yeah, you don't even know where to look to find the disc. It just does so many different things, man. <laughs> it's so cool. Like you're really not sure what's gonna happen when he throws it. A lot of speed coming on that disc. A lot of speed, a lot of stability, yeah. See that one kind of plink out in there and it's gonna be on the outside a little bit there, just uh probably about thirty six or so. He needed about one more inch of height on that one. And Aaron's going to step up there in a little more favorable position, probably just on the edge. Got a little bit of tailwind, it looks like, so he's going to get that one up a little higher, sort of drop it in. Just like that. Get a little other side replay here and. See how Aaron gave that one just enough height to let that wind pull it right down in there, dead center. Yeah, he gives full extension on his putts, giving them a good chance to go in. Jamie as well with a very well played hole. Nice bird. There you go, Matt. Good job. Matt also. These guys are making this hole look easy. Yeah, it's looking real easy. So I'll we'll have to take that lone par on that one. It's gonna tie him and Jamie up. Getting closer. That seems to happen, doesn't it? <laughs> all right, here is hole C. All kind of action going on here. This is a cool hole. It is a cool little hole. They made it an island. It's an island hole, and there's your drop zone right there. It's probably about. 50, maybe a little outside of 50, and then you gotta get inside of that circle or all that stuff outside there's OB. You gotta get inside those little flags. Fair enough. And he's got one hyzered out. He's got it way out there and just not enough height and just mm. never quite had a chance to get back in. Oh, that's a drag. Yep, he'll have to go to that drop zone. Matt's stepping up and he's going to go backhand as well. Maybe a little bit more open on that side. He's got it scooted around that one pine. He flirted with it, but he slid it up there very nicely. Yeah. going to go back in at this bad boy too, see if he can get around that pine. Got it going up a little high, he's going to get inside the pine. Needs her to settle down, and she does. You have a nice putt. If you make the island, you got a good putt. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like that's true. Yeah, it's probably a twos and fours on this hole. Twos and fours, twos and fours. Very uh -oh. nice shot. We're going to get our second foxtail. <laughs> Perfect. It's probably about 12 feet away. Oh high. Yeah, you can see that wind blowing, man. Just dancing those flags. Jamie makes a smart decision, goes at the bottom of the pole and parks it. So he'll have to take his four and move on. Aaron, on the other hand, has a really nice look here. It looks like a little bit of tailwind. So good. Got another one up high and let her come down in there perfectly. I love it. A little more idea of the distance here on that one. Oh man, that was 
pie and very cool. Yep, you gotta throw him a pie though <laughs> with that tailwind or it never happens, so. A lot of confidence, great putt. Alright. And nice a great drive and a great putt, yep. Yeah, that one's costly for Jamie. He lost two strokes to the card on that one, so those are tough, to, tough to swallow. Ouch. That's gonna tie up Aaron and Jamie and give us a two-stroke separation at the top there. Ooh, now we get to all the wooded holes. Back to the woods. Yeah, this one's uh, incredible. I'd like to thank Tate again. I think it took him few batteries. Him and Daniel took them a few batteries to fly this hole. <laughs> it must have been so hard to fly this drone. I mean, it's scary. Look out. <laughs> is I there mean, a line? Which line do you take? Think how hard it is to throw a disc through here. It's hard to th fly one of these things through here. Look out. <laughs> now, you can see that is a tiny little gap right there, and it seems like those trees are just reaching out to get you. <laughs> And if one doesn't get you, the next one's going to get you. Gotcha. Oh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Double kicker. Came back pretty good, though, so fortunate. Oh, goodness. Yeah, and that one kicked pretty straight hard to left, so that one's going to be really not fun. Another gotcha. Another gotcha. Yeah, as you can hear, we had the airplane training missions going on all, all day, it seemed like, and they were buzzing the trees, so. Oh. A lot of distractions. Yeah, this is a Plinko hole. Just uh, Plinko and see where you wind up, right? I mean, I guess you don't have a whole lot of choice. I think I would go roller. I swear, I'd go putter roller straight up the middle, forehand putter roller. Alright. That's what I think I would do. But I'm just a camera guy, so I don't know nothing really. <laughs> we we do how good Cool yeah. Jones is. It's a pretty impressive player. That one got up there. Very nicely done. Anytime you can get by that many thousand trees, you did a good job. Yeah, you can see James I mean excuse me, Matt there bounced out in pretty good shape. Got a nice little lane, just chuck it down and there you go. Do it like that. Nicely done. So I'm having to go with a knee, kick out, forehand. Now he goes with the roller. Got it laid down, but it just caught a little quick edge. Got a little right on him. And then, of course, kept rolling. And just going to put him about 45 out with about. 357 trees in the way. <laughs> now he's got like eight trees in the way. All right, maybe 12 trees in the way. <laughs> oh, what a good effort! That's so close. Aaron from a similar position. I feel like he had a couple less trees messing with him though. He had a pretty decent look. And he cashed that far, baby. That's a big putt. Yeah, that guy that guy can putt. If he had a line, not much. He had to force it. Wow. Very nicely done. Jamie wound up a little past the basket there, and he's only got one little tree to straddle out around. Not too bad. A little downhill action. Puts that par in. Nicely done. Yeah, I think I'd be okay with par on this hole. It's so yeah. hard. It's caddy Mr. Jack there. Shout out to Jack Franklin. Yep. So we have to take the bug on that one. Matt looking about 10 feet past the basket. Maybe, a little, maybe 8 feet. Take his par move on. A little separation, a three point lead at the top. Here 
Here we go. Another traipse through the woods. Got to get through these trees. Then you got to get through these guys here. Look out. Look out, guys. <laughs> then you got to take a little bit of a right turn and get through all these trees. More trees. Yep. And then you got to get right in between all those trees. <laughs> Don't go past into the palmettos there or you're screwed. So. With some elevation changes all through it. And it's just a par three, so you only got three chances to do that. So. <laughs> that goes way up high. He caught it a little early and sort of kicked down decent, though. Really pretty favorable result. Very similar to the shot the Matt had. It looks so good. It was going to happen and then it just got kicked. It's a nice high turnover. <clears throat> James going to change it up and go to a little flick action. Gave it a nice oh. height, but he also kicked that tree and came down pretty much straight down behind it, I'm pretty sure. You can't even see it. It looks like the perfect line from here. I feel like they're nailing it. And mm -hmm. They're nailing it. Yeah. <laughs> it's... So it's a lot of trees over there in the middle. Oh, he got by it. He got past it and then he got pretty good. Got a decent position. Still got a lot of trees between him and the basket, but he's got a better look than everybody else. Ooh, he gave it his all. He, Jamie always does. <laughs> That's true. He had it going straight at it, caught one, and dropped him down just a little outside the circle. So have a look. That was a super smooth turnover. Went straight past the basket. He's going to have to deal with those palmettos a little bit and probably going to be just on the edge. Ooh. It's a great upshot, man. If you can jump putt your upshot, you are ahead of the game. Speaking of that, yeah. nice putt upshot. Yeah, you see you got your little right to left crosswind there. Yeah, even in the woods. Even That's in the they... woods. Uh, it's going to be from par, I want to say about 37 feet. Oh, Dang, yeah. we knew that was in there. Solid height. Yeah, Jamie said working man's par on that one. <laughs> Matt with a beautiful kneel down par save himself. Yeah, Nicely done. And it's only from a similar distance, but pretty much open. Puts you in there nice and high and dead center. Yeah, anytime you can walk away with a par on this hole, you're happy. as all of our competitors did on that one, so very nice job. Definitely get out of that wooded section there with a sense of relief, get back into this openness. <laughs> this is hole eight. We are back to numbers now. Part three, 465 feet. It's very cool. Open, 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 and then not so open. <laughs> yeah, you really want to get down there and try to take that hard right in there because if you go in a little early, there's a lot of stuff in there. Hey, I like that sign. That Fox Hills, they look pretty cool. Oh, that's the old logo, isn't it? Cute. Yeah. Yeah. Matt got a little early there and he's going to have a tough little shot. Yeah, if you got the long flick shot here, I'd definitely go with the uh, forehand on this one if you got it. Naturally, it wants to go over there and just jump into those palmettos. I think it's got a gravitational pull over there or something. <laughs> Magnetic. Plastic magnet. Something. <laughs> There's a line to the basket from there, but he's probably going to have the bush messing with him a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a funky stance and stuff, like you said, messing with you. 
And he's got one outside. He's also headed for the plastic magnet and sucks it right in there. Just like you said. Sullivan's going to go with that flick shot, give it a nice little flick run. Ooh, this looks good. Yeah, he's got that one turned over. Come out of it. Got to stay away from the plastic magnet. Oh, it touches it. Somehow it avoided the gravitational <laughs> pull of it. And he's wound up about pin high, but you can see he's probably still 50 feet away from the basket. That had to go with a bailout roller that cut in a little quick on him, and it's going to leave him a lot more than he wanted. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably like five feet in front of you. Eh? I think I'm five feet in front of you. Copy. Jamie and Aaron figuring it out. Jamie's going to go first. Does him a little finger papa. Pops <laughs> base of the tree and kicks up nicely. Why does that always make me giggle? I don't know. It's just beautiful. That's why I say it. <laughs> I love a good finger papa. Yep. That's another finger papa. <laughs> also very well played. You can see Matt there. He looks open from here to there, but from the other angle, not so much. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, he did good just to get it there, I feel like. That was such a tough shot. Tree right in front of him in the basket, so. That's a tough one. Right off the top. Very nice effort. And have to take the par. And Matt's going to have to step up and take this bogey from about 10 feet away. And that's tough when you get into those woods early though, and that's gonna happen probably more often than not. Oh, yeah. Everybody else is gonna catch up a little bit. It's gonna make it a little tighter. A little bit. Now a two stroke lead and one behind that, so got some good golf going on. It's everybody's game. Alright, hole nine over the water, three hundred and forty feet. Just a par three. All these guys can easily get there, but you can also easily catch one of these trees and hit that hill and roll back into that water. So tough hole, especially with that little bit of gusty wind we got going on here. Luckily, these guys looks like it's a little bit of a tailwind, so won't hurt too bad. <laughs> Aaron first up, and he's got one flipped over and taking some beautiful air bounces and going right at it. And he's going to wind up just on the edge, maybe a little inside. Jamie's going that outside hyzer, pure hyzer spike route. He catches that this the edge he's got a little bit of an unfortunate kick but he's gonna only be looking at about 27 feet solely with a very nice looking flat back hand flipped up on him a little bit there and got a little bit outside and that tree did not help because he was definitely gonna hyzer back in and maybe a little skip and have a look and now he's gonna be probably about 60 out he got robbed <laughs> Matt throwing that pure straight at it line. And you park job. Oh, one more foxtail for the people. I love it. Yeah, this one came out of his hand and he looked so relaxed and yeah, that one looked like he knew it the whole time. Perfect. I think he's played here once or twice. Yeah, yeah that's a great skills. shot. See Sullivan wound up over there. Not, nothing much in the way, but he's got a little bit of distance. He gives a little bit of a run, but kind of a lag shot. Good effort. Oh, oh. my. He hit everything but the chains on that one. Bummer. Jamie's going to be about similar distance, maybe a foot or so inside of that. Probably about 25 feet.
And that one cut straight through on him. That was just mean. That was mean. James got a powerful hyzer putt that sometimes don't agree with the chains, just like all of our putts don't, right? Mm. <laughs> so Matt's going to get his stroke back on the people there if he can make this seven foot putt here in a minute coming up. <laughs> Yeah, he does. No spoiler alert, everybody. Just <laughs> relax. All right, that's going to put him back in a three-stroke lead and four strokes over the other two guys. So Matt's holding his own, hanging in there. Sure appreciate everybody for watching, and um, we'll have this next segment out immediately. So come right back and watch us. Jo sixteen. Good stuff. Yeah, there's 24 holes. We got 12 more to go, so hang in there and get ready for some more disc golf. Thank you so much, Boris MD, for being the title sponsor. Yeah, these guys sponsored the whole thing. And Dan and and Glenn Alexander, you guys, are awesome. Disc golf center, thank you so much for your continued support of Fox Hills Disc Golf. Get yourself a copy of Gracie and the Marvelous Metal Basket and get copies for every kid you know. Yeah, and the adults too. Everybody needs to read it, really. You can learn. <laughs> Fox Hills merchandise. We got decals. We got t-shirts. Fun stuff. Appreciate all you guys' support. Weston Animal Hospital always helping us out, helping us video and helping us with our animals. We sure appreciate you guys. And thanks everyone for watching and Please subscribe and share and we'll see you soon.